stock, Mr. Creech, I assure you. Just as advertised. Tractable, too. Easily trained, never been abused. Stand up straight, boy. Sound in every particular. You have my word on it. It's more than passable, Mr. Trainer. <laughs> Close on to first rate. But the wench you wrote me about. Lucy! Come over here now. Afternoon, Mrs. Howard. Mr. Howard. Afternoon. You hear me, girl? Nobody's gonna hurt you. Please, don't make me go. There, see? I can't leave see, my baby. what did I tell you? He's trained, too. Please, don't take me from my baby. Come in, Roxy. And you, too, Thomas Driscoll, or Chambers, as the case may be. <laughs> My Roxy, if they aren't downright similar, like two splinters off the same plank. Rent day today, Mr. Wilson. Yes, yes, Mrs. Barry, very well. Now, let me come. <laughs> Glory, Master Wilson, they done job with you for certain. Coffee, Roxy. No, thank you, sir. That's the thing they do best, gentlemen. This here, my boy Chambers. And this is Mr. Percy Briscoe's Tom. One's a counterfeit of the other, but I'm dogged if I can tell who. <laughs> Ain't nobody can tell me. Because Tom over the one in the fine, fancy clothes. But I'm baffling him. Even my supposed Drisco ain't that certain which child is his. Ain't hardly look at him anyway since poor Miss Drisco died. Hush up, you hear? Hush up, you fussing. That's all right, honey. It's the mean old chief, ain't it? Did you ever think, Roxy, that our mutual ancestors, Adam and Eve, had many advantages, the principal one being that they escaped teething? Ah, but I said I'd take your chirograph, didn't I? And now, sir, my hand picture. Oh, chirograph means the same. Same word with more feathers on it, that's all. Mm. Now, Roxy, brush your right hand through your hair just to pick up some of the natural oil. Yes. Now, press your palm down firmly on the glass. Right. Okay, Roxanne, age 20, taken April 3rd, 1830. Would you believe there are those who consider this a foolish preoccupation? Yes, yeah, sir. What I mean is now, sir. No. Well, they could well be right. However, you see this one? I knew from looking at it this man would come to no good end, and sure enough, he got elected to the state legislature. <laughs> what man say? Looks like I've been cleaning the chimney. Ah, but that smudge holds secrets. Uh, you see that line there? It says you'll have a long life. And eventful, too, for a while, from the depth of it. Now, these lines here govern the head and the heart. See how they run along together for a while, till the heart line takes over, cuts right across, and curves up toward... That's odd. I haven't seen anything like that before. What? <coughs> You know, this is still a sort of imprecise science, like theology or beekeeping. But I tell you what, long as they're here, why don't I print up these little tadpoles for my collection? Never did see a little tad, didn't like to get his hands in some boot blacking. Recognize no harm. Miss Wilson? You see something in my hand you ain't telling. Here we are. Your copy of the bill of sale. All signed and sealed. Henry, see they're all watered and fed for you. Load them on the wagon. Yes, sir. Uh, have you uh, looked at the brass and copper I got over here? All in order, Mr. Screech. You'll find I only do business the one way. Mm, well, that's well known in the trade, Mr. Trainer. But I'm buying the girl on consignment. She looks like a runner. Like she skedabs before delivery. I'll stand the loss unless I can prove I paid for her. 
You know, I'd feel a whole heap uh, safer if this was certified. Oh, well, no, this being court week, every darn lawyer in town would be over to the county seat. Except maybe Wilson. I guess he might be open for business. Wilson, is there something the matter with him? Well, honest enough, it's just a mite peculiar is all. Well, I'm going to want a copy of that, too. I suppose even putting head Wilson's signature hold up on that. Come on up to the office. She gave me any trouble, give her some lump sugar. I just love that lump sugar. Morning, Mr. Wilson. Morning, gentlemen. A business or social call, Mr. Trainer? Uh, business, uh, Mr. Wilson. Well, you just happened to find my desk cleared, figuratively speaking, of course. Now, how may I serve you? A bit of habeas corpus, or perhaps a suit for breach of promise of marriage? Uh, ordinary uh, business matter. I present Mr. Adolphus Creech up from Memphis in the Negro trade. Ordinary bill of sale. Appreciate if you would attest to its firmness. To hereby sell, transfer, convey, and consign all right, title, and beneficial interest. Say now, that's mighty. It's all right, Roxy, you can stay. It's mighty ornamental. Six Negro males, vision to wit. Zamba, age about 55. Blacksmith at 1,850. Alexander, age 20, 750. Also one Negro wench. Lucy, age 20. Ladies maid, 200. On consignment for Mr. Andrew Hempel, Washington County, Mississippi. Being sold down the river? Uh, no, sir, just the girl. Lucy, she's Mr. Percy Driscoll's girl, isn't she? Uh, not anymore. Down the river? Well, it was the condition of the sale. Mr. Driscoll was very particular about that. It seems he caught the girl stealing. Uh, he's not a harsh man, Mr. Percy Driscoll, but uh, one thing I can't stand is a thief, uh, is what Mr. Driscoll said. Sent her down the river, he says. Uh, Set an example for the other negroes. Does she have any children? Uh, they're not entered. Well, now, I got me a buy only for the wench. Wouldn't take the picking in these if they was free. In the field, be six, seven years where they start even earning the key. Fields? This girl's a house servant, not a field hand. You put her to hard labor, she won't last beyond one crop. This isn't a bill of sale, it's a death warrant. Well, hard to say that. But do you hold the uh, instrument to uh, be sound? It's legal, if that's what you mean. Well, there'll be no fee unless I certify this. I don't think I'd care to do that. Well, that's mighty generous of you, sir. Uh, and obliging, uh, most obliging. Mm -hmm. I'm scared, Moss Wilson, I'm scared. Dad Lucy, she could be me. Come now, Roxy. Now, sir, that man, someday he coming for my baby. That's what you see in my hand, wasn't it? That was just nonsense. You know that. I know one thing. I could any time have sold away from my own baby. On account, I ain't nothing better than Nick. That's foolishness, Roxy. Mr. Driscoll never do a thing like that to you in the chambers. He thinks too highly of you. Besides, you haven't done anything. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank God, sir. I got to fetch young Master Tom back before it's time to eat. I can do this myself. A slave? You mean I tip my hat to a slave? Name's Roxy. Belongs to Mr. Percy Driscoll. Same as that other wench. But well, she's why? In the face, maybe. Not in the blood. Roxy. If she ever goes on the market, now you just let me know. Could might happen. Mr. Driscoll been feeling poorly. Business is ailing, too. He just might have to go under the hammer to settle his debts. No fancy goods like her go to premium in New Orleans. <laughs> her color and contour, girl like that fetch 4000 easy. Maybe we'll just run off and hide someplace. <laughs> 
There ain't no place safe. There ain't no place the nigga catches can't find you. There ain't no place safe to set up glory. And that's a fact. You can't run up to it but get sold down and feels like there ain't no place but in it. What else can we do? <laughs> we go down and jump ourselves into the river. We go to the other side of the Jordan where the troubles of this world is all over. Your mammy and you be together forever. There ain't no black there. Ain't no white. Everybody angel color in heaven. Don't you fret, Jamie, honey. Be just like going to sleep on a pallet and waking up on a sofa cushion. Don't you fret. Tell you what, we dress ourselves up real pretty. So when they find us, ain't nobody want to say, who damn sorry looking niggas standing there before the throne. I'm gonna put on my best red dress. And you ain't going nowhere in that old sucker sack. No, sir. <laughs> Suppose we just borrow one of Master Tom's fine fancies. <laughs> Why? He won't even miss this. <laughs> and when you got this on, ain't no one. Not even the angels wanna know which is who. Why ain't never one say you and him is like enough to pass for twins? Oh Lordy, ain't that a pure fact? his body unto the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection unto eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. I give the cup. The text was appropriate, sir. Thank you. It's very nice. Rest in peace. We'll miss him. This town will certainly miss your brother. A fine man. Thank you My so much. My sincere condolences, Mr. Nice Mr. to see you. My condolences. Bless him. We appreciate your sympathy. I'm glad you came, Rowena. Thank you for coming. Now, my wife has informed me that those of you who were members of Mr. Percy Driscoll's household are uneasy about what will now become of you. Now, let me put your minds at rest. There is a place in our service for each of you. Understand now. None of you is to be sold. Roxy. Go along now. Yes, and Mr. Driscoll, what the judge said just now does not apply to you. You ain't fixing to sell me away, are you, judge? The judge has something to tell you. Mr. Wilson. Well, before he died, Roxy, Mr. Percy Driscoll had me append this codicil to his will. He added this to his will. Having entrusted the guardianship of my beloved son, Thomas Abeka, to the legal care and domestic affection of my brother, York Driscoll, I see no further need for the continued service of my Negro girl, Roxanne. The fact that for many years her tender and true-hearted devotion to the boy could not have been exceeded had he been her own flesh, blood, and cuticle has not gone unnoticed and shall not go unrewarded. Therefore. I direct that the attached letter be given to her as the appreciation of a grateful master to a faithful servant. It's a letter of manumission, Roxy. Your freedom papers, Roxy. You've been set free. Yasm? Well, that means you can go anywhere you wish and work for anyone you choose and earn wages and keep them and not call any man master. Uncle, would you mind awfully if I took the Phaeton by myself? I'd like to be alone for a while. Of course, my boy. Master Tom, I've just been turned loose, but if y'all want, I'll stay and... Miss Vic, I got to go away now. Find myself a living. I do appreciate this, sir. I truly do. But I can't leave Ma Master Tom. He's going to need me. Nonsense. He's nearly full-grown. Hardly needs a nurse, ma'am, anymore. 
Besides, he'll still have your son Chambers look after him. Chambers, I'm driving the fate. Oh, yes, sir. You're to be my body servant. But yes, sir, Master. You're to stay close to me at all times. Yes, sir. After all, Roxy, he'll soon be a young man of place and property. That's what you wanted him to be, wasn't it? Yeah, I was Mr. Wilson. That's what I raised him for. I reckon from here on, he's going to do just fine. See your uncle or any of his friends coming by nips inside and warns you. And don't let them see you. Keep your eyes peeled, Chambers, or by God, I'll peel your hide. Kiss my foot, nigga. Come on, shine my shoe. How about shine? Shine that shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I never do it. Never do it. Next round says he makes it. Four sides rack cocktails, Lonzo, 15 minutes apart, in hey, clean glasses and a plate of fried oysters. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Driscoll. I presume, sir. I'm merely returning the courtesy, sir. You once invited yourself to my table. Oh, my car. The Jack of Diamonds? I have 51 others, sir. Philo Bartley? Our last introduction cost me $900. On the river, last fall, oh, the Southern Queen. Yes, yes, yes. Well, what of it? Perhaps you also recall a friendly game of stud horse poker in the gentleman's cabin. And then your purpose exceeded your purse, and I extended to you a handsome credit. Do you recall that, sir? And this, your signed IOU, Thomas a. Becker Driscoll. Of course, I was some surprised when we reached St. Louis, and I had heard that you had gotten off the boat at Belleville the night before. Yes, well, I had every intention of paying that. Of course, I didn't know where you were to be found. Right here. I'm to be found here. I'm paid here. My boat leaves within the hour, which is just enough time for me to accompany you to your bank. Well, you will oblige me, sir, with my $900. Sound coin, current notes only. I'll just count the interest. And if I don't oblige? Well, then perhaps I'll just have to repeat everything I just said to the local judge and show him your promissory note. Yes, well, we want you to miss your boat. The bank is over on River Street. Knock that man down. Oh, that's your game, man. Knock him down! Right, down you. Here's Walt! Right. Wanna play games? Now hold on there, Bartley. To kill a slave in this county, you must pay its owner the value of his property. Slave? Chambers here is worth $2,000. Can you afford it on top of your other loss? Slave? Why, he's as white as I. You ain't no nigga, are you, boy? Yes, sir. I can't afford killing, but I can do $900 worth of damage. <laughs> All members being present, the regular meeting of the Free Thinkers Society of Dawson's Landing Founders Lodge will please come to order. The chair recognizes the Honorable Secretary. <clears throat> Mr. President, I move that we suspend the rules of order and proceed directly to the agenda. The chair seconds. All in favor, aye. The ayes have it. The 
on the calendar is now in session. Here we are, David. <coughs> the ironical calendar of Puttenhead Wilson. David, don't you think that David Wilson would be a trifle more... in the event of publication, that is? No, sir. Puddinhead. Why, with a name like that and the reputation that goes along with it, a feller can nonsensify all he wants to. Never mind what he writes, folks hold it a marvel that he got the pen across the paper without tipping the ink pot on the carpet. A David... Now, he's got to be a bear on the subjunctive and know all the tribal habits of the semicolon. No, well, taking it all around, Judge, Puddinhead suits me just fine. Now, where'd we leave off last time? Well, let me see now. We'd gotten as far as March 31st. Here we are. The philosophical thought for the day is, man is the only animal that blushes or needs to. <laughs> this should be published, David. Indeed, it should. Well, that brings us now to the first day of April. Yes, and I had one for that. It could be a national holiday, you know. Here it is. April 1st. This is the day upon which we are reminded of what we are on the other 364. <laughs> See you, Uncle. I'm off to St. Louis directly, Uncle. I'd be most obliged to... Dave, okay, now I've interrupted something. A, a meeting of your philosophical society or some of your gypsy fortune-telling? Judge, I'll be out in the hall. Now, sir, I was wondering if I might presume on you for an advance on my allowance. I realize, of course, that I, I'm somewhat overdrawn. Somewhat. Considerable is more like it. You never spend time at home with your aunt and me? St. Louis again? Well, I find the society there to be amiable and stimulating. And prodigal. Tom, I realize that much of the world looks with a tolerant eye on the young man's frivolity. I've done so myself. But dissipation is quite another matter. That reflects not only on one's own good name, but on that of his family. My dear uncle, I would drink river water and smoke pine cones if it would ornament the name of Driscoll. Is, is that what you require of me? I require civility, sir. I will pay no more of your gambling debts. Should you contract any further such debts, let me be frank about the consequences. Evening, Master Wilson, sir. Chambers. My glory, whatever happened to you? Oh, nothing, sir. Looks like you went to a hatchet fight and left your hatchet at home. Oh, no, sir, I just tumbled myself. Fall down's all. Is that a fact? Thank you, Uncle, for your generosity and your advice. Come on, bless you, let's go. Cold. My apologies, David. The boy was in a hurry. And the thoughtlessness of youth. St. Louis again, I declare. I truly do declare. He's not returning to Yale College, you know. Well, I suppose it's for the best. He seems to have acquired all of the Yankee iniquities and none of their virtues. Assuming they have any. Judge, I think a man should be allowed to have some redeeming vices. Perhaps. But never bad manners. No, no, no. It's our fault, of course. Mrs. Driscoll and I have indulged them. Never having a child of our own, I'm afraid we've spoiled the one we inherited. Lord knows, sir, I've tried to show him a good example. Well, now, Judge, there are a few things harder to put up with than the annoyance of a good example. Hmm? Oh, old adage. Something for the calendar. Can be slipped in anywhere. Well, what's all the fuss, Mr. Dawkins? Where's everybody going? Everett. 
Two foreigners just took up lodging there. Well, there's a prodigy. Where else would strangers put up? Oh, these extraordinary foreigners. These are Italians, you know. From Europe. My stars. They're of noble birth, besides. Dukes or some such. You coming in? Well, why not? citizens, Mr. Richard. Dawkins owns the candle factory. Oh, and this is Mr. Put Mr. Uh, David Wilson, uh, one of our uh, many attorneys, uh, Count uh, Luigi Capello, Count uh, Angelo Capello. Or maybe I got that the wrong way around. Anyway, they're, uh, they're from Florence. Uh, that's over in Italy. A great honor, sir. What is it you say here? Howdy, old horse. <laughs> <laughs> Buongiorno, signore. Questo è fantastico. You speak the language of Dante? Yeah, well, I just used up my entire supply. Why, if I said piccolo now, I'd be plumb out of stock. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, tell me, gentlemen, if I'm not being too inquisitive, uh, what brings you here to Dawson's Landing? Business or recreation? Curiosity, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> The present plan of our distinguished visitors is to sojourn amongst us with a view to possibly forsaken the Cypress Hills of their native Tuscany for a permanent abode among the gum trees and magnolias of Cape Girardeau County, where, as the poet sings, naught breaks the sweet tranquility save the thunder of fallen rose petals. And the idiotic babble of newspaper editors. Well, I think it's too bad by half. I really, truly do. What is, my dear? Well, that these two young gentlemen of heritage and sensibility should be boarding at that dreadful tavern. And what are you proposing? Why, that we invite them to stay here with us until they establish themselves. And of course, we can have a reception, which will enable them to meet quality, including suitable young ladies. I mean, think how inspiring it'll be for our time. I mean, who could have a more refining influence on a young man than the flower of European gentility? Oh, dear. I do wish she'd return from St. Louis. Soon, Mrs. Driscoll will sue him. His funds must be nearly exhausted. I know I owe you, but then you can't get blood from a turnip, can you? My whiskey. Turnip's uncle might bleed right nicely. See here, Bartley, if you were to tell my uncle, I'd be cut off without a cent. From what I've heard. And you wouldn't get anything? No, you would. I reckon the judge would pay off your debts before breaking his will. It's a matter of family honor. Get the $900 somewhere. <laughs> $900? <laughs> That was six months ago. Oh, I didn't tell you. The interest has been reinstated. It's now 1100 What? And it goes up 20% a month on the unpaid balance. So you can take your time within reason. My, you're empty. I have another. Put a better, Miss Dawkins. Them two fellas got the fastest hands I ever did see. Never missed a note, as far as I could tell. Now, which one of you is Count Angela? Our girls do seem to be taken with those twins. Hope they aren't taken in. 
but never from one so charming. <laughs> now do come over here and have our sorcerer read your hand. You will be a darling and do it now, won't you, Mr. Wilson? Well, now, Rowena, I don't oh, know. You. He's read most everybody in town at least twice. You are a palmist, sir. Oh, he's a wonder. Well, just by studying the wrinkles on your hand, he can discover what never happened and prophesy what never will. Well, it's just an old hobby horse I ride. There's some folks who think it's, well, pudding-headed. I am not so skeptical, sir. Oh? Nor am I. I will submit willingly, if the ladies will be amused. Well, now, I just happen to have some place with me. Sally? I generally bring them to a party. The ladies think that it gets the men so distracted they sometimes won't get into talking politics. Now, uh, Count Angelo, uh, Luigi, if you'll just run your hands through your hair just to pick up some of the natural oil. One thing you will notice, although they are twins, their lines are by no means identical. You see, being simultaneous doesn't necessarily mean that twins share the same destiny, unless, of course, they're Siamese. Oh, come on now, Dave. You butter a fellow up by inventing a string of virtues, and he's bound to admit you made a perfect hit. Just call up a few villainies and see how quick he claims you're a fraud. Just the opposite, sir. I'd consider it proof of his ability. We all have dark secrets. Even you, I venture. And I think that Mr. Wilson has just discovered mine. Isn't that so? Yes. No. Uh, well, uh, not really. You see, the fact is, I don't generally reveal anything of a uh, delicate nature. But I insist that you reveal it, if you can. Well, I'd rather not. You have my permission. <laughs> then I tell you what. I will write it down on this. You tell aloud what you have seen on that glass. And then I will read what I think you have seen. I'm afraid it's quite clear. Do you insist? Have you ever killed a man? In a hotel in India, a year ago, I killed a man. I just don't believe that. It was an act of self-defense committed to save my life. It was in Bombay. A thief had come in the night to murder me. My brother surprised him. There was a struggle, and the man was killed with the very thing he had come to steal. What was that? A knife. Not an ordinary weapon. It was a gift from the Gekwar of Baroda. It was ivory hilted, with a ruby on the pommel like frozen fire. The sheath was hammered gold and set with precious stones. It is worth many thousand rupees. Its antiquarian value is beyond the price. Well, I think we all need refreshment after that terrifying tale. Sally? Wouldn't I just love to see that knife? But I expect it's tucked away someplace quite safe. Indeed it is. I keep it hidden under my pillow. We were hoping that you and your brother would play for us again. Do you know anything about Mr. Mozart? Ask you, Chambers, what is all this? Well, I'm sorry, Master Tom, but there's someone come to see you, sir. Where? In the garden, sir. The old schoolhouse. What? Who in thunder is it? It's not... It's not partly, is it? No, sir. She say, can you see her? Please, sir. She? Me, Master. Don't you know your nurse, Mammy? 
Good Lord, Roxy, what are you doing back here? I thought you were... My goodness, if you ain't grown up handsome. <laughs> I wouldn't have known you, you were so pretty. I declare I wouldn't. Five years. I've been waiting five years just to see you and hear you tell how joyful you is to see your old mammy again. Now, you tell me, Dad. I'll just lie down right here and die in peace. Yes, I wish you wouldn't do that. How would I explain the body? <laughs> Dad, you're just the same old Tom. I'm always joking and funny with his mammy. Well, I remember when you Look were... Look here, what do you me. want? Well, I only to tell you how happy I is to see my child once more. Me being away in Chicago all these years. But you knew about Dad, of course. Like the Chambers told you how I've been chambermaid up there in this big hotel. Please, please, I want to get back to the party. About the monstrous fire that burned that hotel down to a heap of cinders. But you knew about that, didn't you? But that ain't the worst. No, sir. For my wage burned up with it. More than $465. If a blessed center to save up for my old age and my sickly year all gone up the chimney. That's what you got me out here for, was it? Came here for money. No, Master. Oh, maybe just an old dollar, too. Till I find work to put food in my mouth, but only because you being rich and all. Yes, well, nobody can get a red cent from me. Because I don't have anything to give anyone. What about that money you just stole? What did you say? I seen you take it. I look in the window and I see you take it out of your uncle's money box. Liar. My oh, God, I could have you whipped for saying that. No, you can't. I ain't no slave. I free. I got the paper. Your uncle know me. He believe me, too, without a tell him what I'm so You hit me. You hit me. He never hit you. I never swear to you. I can't do none of those things back to you. There's one thing I'm bound to do. I'll go right in there and tell the judge that his nephew did not. His nephew did he adopted and not raising us ain't nothing but a thief. I'm sorry, I hit Punishes you. his place to do it. I shouldn't have hit you, Roxy. I'm sorry, I really am. You apologizing? Yes, I apologize. Now, what do you want? When I come here, I didn't want nothing. Only to hear you say how joyful you is to see old Roxy again. How glad you is that your old mammy's come back. Of course I am. I want to hear you say it. And to throw your arm around me while you're doing it. I'm very happy, uh, joyful to see you again, Roxy. And I'm glad you came back. That ain't enough. Oh. No, now it ain't. On top of that, you got to promise you help old Roxy out with hey, a dollar, oh. maybe two, every now and then when I need it. Of course I will. I swear it. Here, take this. And another one. And I don't say anything to Uncle. Pay you every month. Where will I find you? I live in outside town. Chamber knows. Don't you fret, I find you. I'd give you more, but I have need of it. Desperate need. Hey, I need twice this, and I don't know where I'll get it. Oh, who do you have in there? Who do I have in there, Tom? Who do I have in there, Tom? I'll tell you who I have in there. Who is it, Tom? Ladies. You was always clever about getting what you want. I reckon you find a way. It is too much. It is really 